neither as yet could I attain to any comfortable persuasion that I had faith in Christ. But instead of having satisfaction, here I began to find my soul to be assaulted with fresh doubts about my future happiness, especially with such as these, whether I was elected. But how, if the day of grace should now be passed and gone? By these two temptations I was very much afflicted and disquieted, sometimes by one and sometimes by the other of them and first to speak of that about my questioning my election i found at this time that though i was in a flame to find the way to heaven and glory and though nothing could beat me off from this yet this question did so offend and discourage me that i was especially at some times as if the very strength of my body also had been taken away by the force and power thereof this scripture did also seem to me to trample upon all my desires it is not of him that willeth nor of him that runneth but of god that showeth mercy Romans 9.16. With this scripture I could not tell what to do, for I evidently saw that unless the great God of his infinite grace and bounty had voluntarily chosen me to be a vessel of mercy, though I should desire and long and labor until my heart did break, no good could come of it. Therefore this would still stick with me. How can you tell that you are elected? And what if you should not? How then? O oh Lord, thought I, what if I should not indeed? It may be you are not, said the tempter. It may be so indeed, thought I. Why then, said Satan, you had as good leave off and strive no further. For if indeed you should not be elected and chosen of God, there is no talk of your being saved. For it is neither of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. By these things I was driven to my wit's end, not knowing what to say or how to answer these temptations. Indeed, I little thought that Satan had thus assaulted me, but that rather it was my own prudence thus to start the question. For that the elect only attained eternal life, that I without scruple did heartily close with all, but that myself was one of them, there lay all the question. Thus, therefore, for several days I was greatly assaulted and perplexed, and was often, when I had been walking, ready to sink where I went, with faintness in my mind, but one day, after I had been so many weeks oppressed and cast down therewith, as I was now quite giving up the ghost of all my hopes of ever attaining life, that sentence fell with weight upon my spirit. Look at the generations of old, and see. Did ever any trust in the Lord, and was confounded? At which I was greatly lightened and encouraged in my soul. For thus at that very instant it was expounded to me. Begin at the beginning of Genesis, and read to the end of the Revelations, and see if you can find that there was ever any that trusted in the Lord and was confounded. So, coming home, I presently went to my Bible to see if I could find that saying, not doubting, but to find it presently, for it was so fresh and with such strength and comfort on my spirit that I was as if it talked with me. Well, I looked, but I found it not. Only it abode upon me. Then I did ask first this good man, and then another, if they knew where it was, but they knew no such place. At this I wondered that such a sentence should so suddenly, and with such comfort and strength, seize and abide upon my heart, and yet that none could find it, for I doubted not, but it was in holy scripture. Thus I continued above a year, and could not find the place. But at last, casting my eye into the Apocrypha books, I found it in Ecclesiasticus 2.10. This at the first did somewhat daunt me, but because by this time I had got more experience of the love and kindness of God, it troubled me the less, especially when I considered that though it was not in those texts that we call holy and canonical, yet for as much as this sentence was the sum and substance of many of the promises, it was my duty to take the comfort of it, and I blessed God for that word, for it was of God to me, that word doth still at times shine before my face." After this, that other doubt did come with strength upon me. But how if the day of grace should be past and gone? How if you overstood the time of mercy? Now I remember that one day, as I was walking into the country, I was much in the thoughts of this. But how if the day of grace be past? And to aggravate my trouble, the tempter presented to my mind those good people of Bedford, and suggested thus unto me, that these being converted already, they were all that God would save in those parts, and that I came too late, for these had got the blessing before I came. Now was I in great distress, thinking in very deed that this might well be so. Wherefore I went up and down, bemoaning my sad condition, counting myself far worse than a thousand fools, for standing off thus long and spending so many years in sin as I had done, still crying out, Oh, that I had turned sooner! Oh, that I had turned seven years ago! 
it made me also angry with myself to think that I should have no more wit but to trifle away my time till my soul and heaven were lost. But when I had been long vexed with this fear, and was scarce able to take one step more, just about the same place where I received my other encouragement, these words broke in upon my mind. Compel them to come in, that my house may be filled, and yet there is room. Luke fourteen twenty two and 23 these words but especially them and yet there is room were sweet words to me for truly i thought that by them i saw there was place enough in heaven for me and moreover that when the lord jesus did speak these words he then did think of me and that he knowing that the time would come that i should be afflicted with fear that there was no place left for me in his bosom did before speak this word and leave it upon record that i might find help thereby against this vile temptation this i then verily believed in the light and encouragement of this word I went a pretty while, and the comfort was the more when I thought that the Lord Jesus should think on me so long ago, and that he should speak these words on purpose for my sake. For I did then think, verily, that he did on purpose speak them, to encourage me withal. But I was not without my temptations to go back again. Temptations, I say, both from Satan, mine own heart, and carnal acquaintance, but I thank God these were outweighed by that sound sense of death and of the day of judgment which abode as it were continually in my view. I should often also think on Nebuchadnezzar, of whom it is said, He had given him all the kingdoms of the earth. Daniel 5.19 Yet, I thought, if this great man had all his portion in this world, one hour in hell fire would make him forget all. Which consideration was a great help to me. I was almost made about this time to see something concerning the beasts that Moses counted clean and unclean. I thought those beasts were types of men, the clean types of them that were the people of God, but the unclean types of such as were the children of the wicked one. Now I read that the clean beasts chewed the cud, that is, thought I, they showed us we must feed upon the word of God. They also parted the hoof. I thought that signified we must part, if we would be saved, with the ways of ungodly men. And also in further reading about them I found that though we did chew the cud as the hare, yet if we walked with claws like a dog, or if we did part the hoof like the swine, yet if we did not chew the cud as the sheep, we were still, for all that, but unclean. For I thought the hare to be a type of those that talk of the word, yet walk in the ways of sin, and that the swine was like him that parted with his outward pollutions, but still wanteth the word of faith, without which there could be no way of salvation let a man be never so devout. Deuteronomy 14. After this I found, by reading the word, that those that must be glorified with Christ in another world must be called by him here, called to the partaking of a share in his word and righteousness, and to the comforts and first fruits of his spirit, and to a peculiar interest in all those heavenly things which do indeed forfeit the soul for that rest and house of glory which is in heaven above. Here again I was at a very great stand, not knowing what to do, fearing i was not called for thought i if i be not called what then can do me good none but those who are effectually called inherit the kingdom of heaven but oh how i now love those words that spake of a christian's calling as when the lord said to one follow me and to another come after me and oh thought i that he would say so to me too how gladly would i run after him I cannot now express with what longings and breakings in my soul I cried to Christ to call me. Thus I continued for a time, all on a flame to be converted to Jesus Christ, and did also see at that day such glory in a converted state, that I could not be contented without a share therein. Gold! Could it have been gotten for gold, what could I have given for it? Had I a whole world, it had all gone ten thousand times over for this, that my soul might have been in a converted state. How lovely now was every one in my eyes that I thought to be converted men and women. They shone, they walked like a people that carried the broad seal of heaven about them. Oh, I saw the lot was fallen to them in pleasant places, and they had a goodly heritage, Psalm 16.6. But that which made me sick was that of Christ in Mark. He went up into a mountain and called to him whom he would, and they came unto him, Mark 3.13. This scripture made me faint and fear, yet it kindled fire in my soul. That which made me fear was this, lest Christ should have no liking to me, for he called whom he would. But, oh, the glory that I saw in that condition did still so engage my heart that I could seldom read of any that Christ did call, but I presently wished, 
would i had been in their clothes would i had been born peter would i had been born john or would i had been by and heard him when he called them how would i have cried o lord call me also but o oh, i feared he would not call me and truly the lord let me go thus many months together and showed me nothing either that i was already or should be called hereafter but at last after much time spent and many groanings to god that i might be partaker of the holy and heavenly calling that word came in upon me i will cleanse their blood that i have not cleansed for the Lord dwelleth in Zion, Joel 3.21. These words, I thought, were sent to encourage me to wait still upon God, and signified unto me that if I were not already, yet time might come, I might be in truth converted to Christ.